In today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can make automatic test towers in Cura and use it to print some ABS. Now, today's Film It Friday. Film It Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by Creality3DOfficial.com by ComGirl. I've been experimenting with Cura version 5.2.1, and I noticed that in Marketplace, there's a relatively new plugin. It's called Auto Towers Generator by Brad Karchner. It allows you to automatically make test towers, like for retraction or temperature, and it generates the G-code for you. You can visit his website for more detail. To install it, just click on the Install button, read through the agreement, click Accept, and then you have to restart Cura. So I restarted it, and now up here in Extensions, you can see Auto Towers. And there's all different towers that you can choose from, including a custom version for each one. But in order to use the custom version, you need OpenSCAD installed on your machine, which I don't have. I want to try a temperature tower for ABS because I've got some ABS filament that I want to try out. And this thing goes from 250 to 210 degrees in 5 degree increments. So I'm going to go up to the generic PLA here and change it to generic ABS. That should adjust the temperatures automatically in Cura. And I'm just going to use the low quality standard profile in Cura. Now I'm going to search for fan to make sure that the print cooling fan is turned off. Next, I want to verify the temperatures. It's showing 240 degrees C for the hot end. And if I scroll down a little bit further, it's using 80 degrees C for the bed. So I'm going to be printing on an Ender 2 Pro, so this is going to work for me. Now all I have to do is slice it. You can see the auto tower icon shows that it's enabled and it will automatically make the G code. So it says one hour and eight minutes. And I save the file on my machine so I can go in here and look at it. I'm going to open it with just a text editor so we can look at where the temperatures are actually changing. We can see at the top of the file where the bed is set to 80 degrees C and then the hot end to 240. But if I search for the 250 point, it's at layer 3. So this was automatically generated by this plugin app. And if I look for 245, that's at layer 32. And if I search for 240, which I'm not going to show you, that actually shows up at layer 61. So let's look at this in preview mode to see where those layers are. If I scroll down to layer 3, we'll see that layer 3 is right at the top of the base of this tower. So that's nice. But now let's slide up to layer 32 and see where that stops. Hopefully it stops at the top of the block, but you can see it doesn't. It goes like three layers above where the top of the block is. So you have to take this into account. Let's go to 61 and it's the same thing. So he's consistently off by about three layers in this tower. And when I printed, I didn't use any glue or adhesive, and this thing curled up and popped off. I've printed a lot of ABS, and to me the secret is to just use glue stick. I don't care what the bed material is. Use glue stick, and your ABS print will stick just fine. As the temperature changes, it'll show it at the bottom of the LCD. And here's the result. So now we can take a look at this and determine where's the best temperature. If I scroll up from the bottom, it starts to look pretty good about 235. I can see a little bit of separation there at the top of it. And then 230 looks good, 225, and then I start to see gaps and little blobs. So I'm thinking that 230 to 235 is a good point. So I think I'm just going to go with 235, which is a little bit higher than I want to go on an Ender 2 Pro, but I'm going to use it. To get that glue off, a cloth with some warm water will take it right off and clean your bed. It's not a problem. You can wipe the bottom of the print as well. I've got a profile for ABS that I've been working on at a 0.2 layer height. So I'm going to go in here and adjust it to the 235, as I've already done, and the 80 degree on the bed. So I'm going to stick with what the tower had. And I'm going to come down here and make sure that the print cooling fan is off. The rest of the settings are very similar to my normal profiles. A fresh set of glue on the bed, and then we'll print a simple CHEP cube and see if this thing curls up at all, and also how well it looks. And it's not bad. It's certainly not perfect. I got some work to do here, but it's not bad for an early phase of a new profile. But I do have a little bit of warping, so the glue didn't work perfectly on even a small print like this. 
It's recommended to use a heated enclosure when printing ABS. I do have this Creality one, which really just relies on trapping the heat coming off the bed. It helped a little bit, it warped a little bit less, but I think I may add a heater to this thing in the future. So here's the one on the left without the enclosure, here's the one on the right with the enclosure. They're about the same other than a little less warpage on the right one. Creality3dofficial.com by Comgrow has the full lineup of Creality machines, including filament, and you can even buy in bulk and build your print farm right from Creality3dofficial.com. Best of all, they got one of my favorite little printers, the Ender 2 Pro, on sale for $139 in stock. So get one now before they're gone. So I clearly have some work to do to improve this ABS profile, but I will link to it in the description below if you want to try it out. But I love that I can make these quick towers, all different types, just with that plug-in. That's a great feature. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up here if you want to help support the channel. Patreon is one way, and if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.